For the base, I used this clear plastic tray in an asymmetrical shape that I found in a local store. I think it's meant to store makeup or something, but I figured it'd be cool for this. To cover the bottom of the pond, I'm using some craft sand in white and black mixed together and some rock glue. I just mix it together in a plastic cup. Mix it to a paste consistency and then start spreading it on the base. Be sure to get it into all the corners. Now we're gonna let the base dry and start working on the small bridge. First you're gonna need some big or wide popsicle sticks. Figure out where you want the bridge to cross the pond and sketch out like so. You're gonna need two of these. I chose to carve my pieces out, so I'm using this knife. Just do it slowly and be careful not to cut yourself. Remove any rough or uneven edges with a file. You should end up with two pieces like these. These will be the base of the bridge. To go on top, I'm using these small stirring sticks that are just cut to size with the scissor. Now glue them on top of the base. I used E6000 because I needed something that glued pretty fast. To make the railing, I used these small wooden skewers that I filed on one side to make them flat, glued to the side and then connected with another stirring stick. And as you can see, my hair is currently purple. And that's the bridge done. Now back to the pond. To cover the plastic base of the pond, I'm using some different size rocks that I may or may not have found in my mother's garden and I'm gluing them with a hot glue gun. I put my pond on a piece of cardboard just so I wouldn't glue on my table and then I gradually glued stones to the outside and inside to form the pond itself. Just take your time and use different sizes of rock so you can cover all the visible plastic. When you're happy with the look of your pond, set it aside, and then we're gonna work on the fish. You're gonna need some white polymer clay, I'm using Fimo. Take a small ball and roll a snake, then flatten the side slightly and pinch the front to make the head and the end for the tail. Then get out your sculpting tools, I'm using a donning tool, a needle tool, and an exacto knife. I don't know too much about fish anatomy, so I found some reference pictures online of koi fish from different angles and kind of sculpted based on that. I wanted one of them to be kind of reaching out to the surface like it was kind of snatching food. So I wanted the mouth to be open. So I used my knife to cut a little sliver and then my needle tool to kind of hollow it out. The eyeballs are just tiny little balls of clay. On some of the reference pictures the koi fish had kind of beard like flap thingies by their mouth. So I added those with tiny snakes of clay. Now to the difficult part, the fins. As said, I don't know anything about fish, so I don't know what either of the fins are called. I just tried my best to make them as I saw them on the pictures. I found it easy to kind of mush small pieces of clay onto my work surface and then add texture and shape to them with my starting tools and my needle tools.
When you've done all your fins, gently lift them up from your work surface and add them to the fish. When you've done all your fish, bake them completely according to package instructions. Once they're cooled, we're going to paint them with some acrylic paint. I'm also using a fine detail brush. I made three fish, so I tried to paint them a little differently, and I just found inspiration in my reference pictures. Once the paint has dried, we're going to seal it in with some glaze. This is very important when you're going to add something to resin, because otherwise the paint might kind of bleed into the resin. While the fish is drying, we're going to make some plants. I use some white printer paper, some markers and a colored pencil. Fill in a section of the paper with a green marker. I wanted to make some water lilies, so I sketched out some random circles. Then I took the more brownish marker and added some random spots, before making lines on each petal with a pencil. Then I used a small pair of scissors to cut them out. I added a bit more of the brown marker before I glazed them on both sides. I made another grass-like plant by cutting out small strips of the now green paper. These will also be in contact with the resin, so they have to be glazed properly as well. I glued these to the corner of the pond with hot glue. Now arrange your fish the way you want them and glue them in place so they don't move with the resin. I propped one fish up on a small stone so it looked like it was going to the surface. Now get out your resin and mix the two components equally in a cup. Now slowly pour the resin in the pond. I didn't have quite enough resin in this batch, so I mixed another cup and poured it on top. If air bubbles start rising to the surface, you can pop them with the heat from a lighter. Leave the resin to set overnight before moving it. Then all that's left to do is to figure out where you want your water lilies and glue them in place. And then we're done! Now you have your own miniature koi fish pond! <laughs>